What is your primary motivation? Is your primary motivation money? Or is your primary motivation meaning? Now, I want to focus on that question again. What is your primary motivation? I'm not suggesting you can't have multiple motivation, motivations, and I'm not even suggesting that you can't have money and meaning being the same or as important to you or semi-important to you. But one of them has to be at the top of your list. What is your primary motivation? And if you're in the housing industry, as I am, and, I, and I'm passionate about it, this is a really critical question. It's the most fundamental question about the very nature of how we pursue our passion in housing. Is our primary motivation money? And that means we focus on that. Or is our primary motivation meaning? And that means we focus on that because focus is what's really critical here. And we will focus where our primary motivation takes us. And I'll talk a little bit about more about where that is and why that is and how important it is. But I'm going to speak about my primary motivation and why I take the time and the trouble to sit and have these conversations with you and why it is such an important issue for me as I talk about housing, my participation in housing and, and the very nature of housing. I will tell you flat out that my primary motivation from the very beginning of being involved in housing was meaning. I wanted a meaningful role and my meaning was translated as I've told you before. My meaning was translated into, I wanted to change the world one community at a time through one relationship at a time. So it was all about changing the world. That was the meaning of my involvement in housing. I drove myself, Marsha, my bride, and I'll talk a little bit about her now. My beautiful bride, my beloved bride, very much supported me in my motivation to be involved in housing. Now, did it make me money? Yes. Did it make me feel very good about the kind of income I was generating? Yes. Was I being successful while doing it? Yes. But my motivation, my motivation was about changing the world one community at a time through one relationship at a time. And the fundamental building block in that whole transaction, com world, community, and finally relationship was the relationship part. And therefore, everything about my involvement in housing was focused on this issue of relationship. Now I need to talk about the tragic aspect of that. I'm not involved any longer in the housing industry. I loved my involvement in the housing industry. I felt very compelled by it. I was very successful while I was doing it. And in fact, every community I was involved in outperformed the communities in their markets simply because of the very motivation that brought me into those markets at that particular time. And I had a wonderful team to support it. But I had to make a decision about my life and it was driven by my motivation. And my motivation about relationships, about changing the world, was driven by my motivation about love. We were being very successful and along about the time when the entire housing industry was in a topsy-turvy condition and many of the credit-based relationships we had, our banks and our, and our financial institutions that did lending, we're in real serious trouble back in 2012 and 2013. And during the middle of that crisis, a secondary crisis hit me. We were working our way through that crisis. Many of you probably had the same crisis going on at the same time. We were working our way through that crisis when my life was turned upside down because my beloved bride, and that's her behind me, and she is over my shoulder because I consider her my bride part of this entire effort. And you will hear me refer to that on several occasions. But my motivation was love. And about that same time, my wife had a tragic event occur in her life. And that was that she was prescribed some inappropriate medicine by a dentist of all things. And that medicine resulted in her being sent to the hospital in a coma because the medicine was improperly administered 
in spite of the fact that the dentist knew that it was improperly administered. And she went to the hospital in a coma. It turned out she had a disease called C. diff. It doesn't matter, all that doesn't matter, but what does matter is when she finally recovered from that disease and got out of the hospital, she began having these terrible seizures. And we had to work months with many different uh, medical groups to try to find out what the source of these seizures, she never had those before. What was the source of these seizures where all of a sudden she'd be sitting in front of me and the next thing I knew her eyes would roll back in her head and she'd be flat on her face on the ground. It turned out after several trials and several efforts, we discovered that she was getting this false I guess a message is the best way to describe it, coming from her brain that was causing her heart to stop. And what I was observing is her heart stopping suddenly. Therefore, she was effectively dying. And then all of a sudden her heart would start pounding again or beating again. Her brain would send back a signal permitting her heart to, to work. And all of a sudden she would go into very serious thrashing seizures and would recover from it and every time that happened, more and more degradation of her brain was taking place because more and more oxygen was being taken away from her brain. The consequence of all that, the jumping to the final line was, I was forced to make a decision because my primary motivation in life was love. And I had to choose between loving on my bride or my business. And my business demanded my attention. My business compelled me to pay attention to it because we were going through this transition time in the financial industry. We were doing just fine in that. All of my communities were going to be able to recover from it, but unfortunately I had to pay attention to it. And I either had to take care of my communities or I had to take care of my bride. And I decided to take care of my bride because my motivation primary motivation was the meaning of my life. And the meaning of my life was defined by love. And so I abandoned, I walked away from my business. I basically shut it down so that I could put 100% of my effort into caring for my bride. And a few years later, the disease that started this whole process took her away from me. And I have lived without her for a little over a year now. And part of the reason I'm having this conversation with you is a promise I made to her during the course of her illness that compelled me to turn back to getting back into the multifamily and the housing industry and talk about the importance of housing. She made me promise her, while she still was cogent enough to make me promise her, that I would not abandon this pursuit of turning housing into something far more meaningful than just an industry about real estate, which was about making money. And so I'm having this conversation with you, motivated by that commitment I made to my bride, loving her as I sit here in front of you, just as much as I did before. So frankly, the point I'm making to you is when you make this conversation with yourself about your primary motivation, that's number one, your primary motivation, if it's about money, then it's okay. That's not unusual. In fact, I think that's the more common position for most of the people that are involved in the housing industry. That's what we measure. That's what we pay attention to. That is all about transactions. That's all about money. But if you're eager to find out how to make it about something bigger than that, which by the way, will take care of money, but it's only because you do it better, then your primary motivation may be about meaning, your meaning of your life and why you're involved in housing at all. And if you are like me and you're choosing this primary motivation about the meaning of your life as, about, as opposed to the primary motivation being about the money, then I encourage you to stay tuned with me. In fact, I, I, in fact, I wish to go further. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I encourage you to reach out to me and, and ask me to schedule a cup of coffee with me. I encourage you to become fully invested in this possibility of making the world a better place 
because you love housing as much as I love housing. You see the importance of housing just as much as I see the importance of housing. And But you want to be motivated by love. Because ultimately, if you pay attention to your consumer, which is the people who are you're serving when you get it, who you are serving when you're in housing, if you're paying attention to them, your motivation is because you really want to make their life better. And if that's your motivation, you do housing differently than the way housing is being done right now. So if that's your motivation, stay tuned, stay in touch, and we will go down that path together. If money is primary to you and it's all you really care about, it's probably likely that a lot of what I have to say and a lot of the positions that I'll be sharing with you, a lot of the emotional positions that I've taken in life, and a lot of the proof that I've had isn't going to be important to you, and you may not choose to stay in tuned. But if you're motivated by something more than money, not that you don't want money, but that motivation that's greater than money is that you're, you want your life and your involvement to be meaningful, then stay tuned. I look forward to talking with you some more. Thank you for listening to me today. I look forward to our conversations in the future. Have a blessed day.